In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use MXC Exchange, which is a cryptocurrency exchange that has been onboarding a lot of Polkadot related projects. I know they've started onboarding KSM Kusama back in January of 2020, where most of the liquidity was at. They were also on Qcoin, but MXC was where most people were trading Kusama at the time when it wasn't even really well known right before the Polkadot hype and so on which came later down in 2020. But in this video, which is more aimed at for beginners, I'm just gonna show you how to understand the use of this exchange and the different features that it has to offer. And again, if you do decide to sign up for this exchange, I would very much appreciate it. The link can be found in the description of this video. It is a referral link and you can get 30% off your trading fees if you use my referral link, or if you just use the code the invite code that you're going to see later on in this video when i'm going to show you the deposit and withdrawal options now here we can see an example of a token pair and i know some people in the comments of other videos have asked me what is a token pair how can you actually explain what a token pair is well the easy way to explain a token pair is just think of it like trading one cryptocurrency with another so in this case we've got pcx which is part of the chainx project where you're trading it against the USDT pair, which is which stands for USD Tether, which is basically a cryptocurrency token that is pegged to the US dollar. It's a stable token. It shouldn't go above one dollar or below one dollar, but it does by like 0.01 cents or so on sometimes, right? You could get it at like 0.998, for example, or 997, which happens sometimes, but normally it, it stays around the one dollar mark, right? That's the important thing. It's is not subject to the volatility of the rest of the cryptocurrencies. So it's useful to trade because when you use this cryptocurrency as in a trading pair, I know most people like to do it against Bitcoin, but if you use it against USDT, you get that feel of how much are you really earning when you're trading, right? If you're buying at a lower price and selling at a higher price, for example, right? And then here we've got the different types of features which are common of cryptocurrency exchanges and traditional exchanges, which is a limit order you can buy. Uh, on this limit order and what this actually means is it means that you need to actually set a a, a, a price uh, at which you are uh, like a fixed price at which you want to buy into so for example let's say you want to buy in at 545 at a fixed price right so you're you don't care if it's higher right now you just want to wait for that moment for when it dips and you want to get in at 545 so let's say you want to get in at 545 you choose the amount of p6 that you want to buy you click on buy pcx and bingo that's it but of course for that you do need to have usdt which i'm going to show you how to get in a moment when we get uh, further down the line in the deposit and withdrawal a section within the funds feature and again for selling it's exactly the same you choose when to sell at the price say 560 you want to set it to 560 and that's the fixed price so that guarantees you that you're going to get more for your bucks now the other feature here is the market feature so what this means is it basically sells into the lowest sell order sorry it buys into the lowest sell order if you decide to buy as long as there is liquidity here if there isn't it's just going to move on to the next one until it fills you completely depending on the amount of usdt you decide to buy for let's say for example you decide to buy uh, enough pcx which is like say 500 pcx and here we can see that up to 613 pcx it does cost 560 so what will happen is the market will be buying into the bot from the from the exchange will be buying into the sell orders here until it gets to 560 of course if some people place some orders just in that right time uh, below 560 say for example at 557 and they're higher enough to fill you then you're going to get filled up to 557 so that's how market orders work and exactly the same for selling it sells into the buy orders here so again you could see there's quite a discrepancy here, right? Especially for illiquid assets like PCX. And then there's the stop limit feature here, which is basically to protect you. So let's say, for example, if you want to buy at a certain price, uh, you're going to set a trigger uh, to, to make sure that if the, if, the, um, if the price of the token reaches that certain price, you want to make sure that you're placing a limit order to buy in because you don't want to miss out on the run up. Say, for example, uh, you think it's going to go down further but uh, you don't want to buy right now uh, so if it does go higher if you go say fi at 565 you want to make sure that you're setting a stop limit to buy at that price uh, and then it will basically create a limit order which is going to be placed here uh, it's going to be placed here somewhere and then it's going to be buying into it when it gets to that price right so that's that's pretty much how it works here you're just basically ensuring you that you're actually buying at a low price um, if, if it gets to that price, right? Until then, you don't want to set any limit order because you don't want to see it 
reach that price or you don't want the, the order book to show uh, your order this is pretty much it. it's more for the hidden for hidden purposes here right and also for protecting you if you're selling right because let's say for example you want to sell but you don't want to set a set limit order so you want to uh, sell for example at if the price drops below a certain amount then a limit order will be placed here and then it's going to sell it for you so that's how the stop limit actually uh, looks like here now um we do have different features here and this is more for traders um, that understand how this time frame works we can see the charts on different time frames one hour four hour and so on and then we've got the professional exchange here which looks pretty much like the standard exchange except the buys and the sells are on the right hand side as well as the order books and again we've got the selling and the buying here which i haven't actually spoken about and then this one is shows you both but let's see you wanted to see all the sell orders and all the buy orders so here you can see those now of course you can buy crypto here but not with fiat directly so you need to use the p2p uh, functionality or the p2p feature which means that you need to buy from people that are interested in selling uh, crypto for um, for fiat so you'd have to transfer them fiat and then mxc is like the middleman the escrow which is gonna manage those trades now margin trading what this means is basically you're borrowing funds from the exchange in order to be able to trade and again you do have to pay like a fee it's a timely fee like every every couple of hours or so i'm not entirely sure because i've never personally used it you do have to pay that small fee so you need to have enough funds in your account and of course you can get liquidated too if the price uh, of your uh, of the asset that you decide to purchase goes under a certain amount so yeah you can get liquidated with that so you just got to be careful there's the etf section too derivatives and again leverage trading is also possible here but I, again i don't recommend it unless you have experience trading uh, which is basically to be able to trade um, say two times the amount that you've got so you've got like say uh, 100 dot and you want to be able to trade 1000 dot or 2000 dot right again you could you could do that uh, using 10x leverage 20x leverage and so on but again you will get liquidated if the price falls under a certain range uh, so you just got to be careful of that now the proof of stake pool is another option that we've got here and the proof of stake pool is interesting because this basically allows you to stake within the exchange right and this is the estimated annual percentage on return uh, that you can see here you get 6.88 percent with the stable token so if you s decide to stake usd tether which doesn't drop in price which is always expected us dollar you get 6.88 percent return on your investment and another one which i haven't spoken about here is the yield mining which is the hot feature here many people are doing this because the returns are insane but it's also very high risk what this means you're staking these tokens to get a lot of return on your investment because you're supplying liquidity to a trading pool where traders are trading basically you just basically offering them liquidity within that token so that's what this does and that's why the returns are so big because they're getting a share of those exchange fees of their transaction fees that are happening between the buys and the sells so that explains why it's so uh, it's so huge there now there's the activity section here which is related to promotional tasks etc you can also stake ethereum here and so on there's also a tutorial that shows you how to use the exchange again the DeFi mining feature here you can actually uh, stake in order to mine that's how they call it DeFi mining you don't really mine but you're basically offering liquidity just as uh, as i was saying before and by locking your funds for a certain period of time you can see here the minimum locking period is seven days for this ethereum classic is 30 days and so on ethereum is 15 days and the apr for that now finally uh, the last one that i want to talk about here is the deposits right the assets feature so if you go to assets here let's go to my assets so here uh, a lot of this isn't really important it's just the asset distribution with relation to the mxc token but what you may be interested in is the actual deposit feature so how do you actually get funds onto this exchange because let's say maybe you bought uh, on coinbase perhaps or on binance with fiat but you want to get them onto this exchange because you want to buy that token that's only available on this exchange so how do you do that well you choose the asset that you want to uh, that you want to send so for example let's say you want to send ethereum which i don't really recommend right now because it's just very very expensive right the fees are absolutely insane so you can do that uh, we can see we're getting different addresses here so we've got the ethereum address or you've got the ethereum tron tokenized version right so what this means is that there are two different types of ethereum 
tokens or one of them is the coin which is off the, on the official ethereum blockchain the other one is a token which is pegged to the ethereum uh, to the ethereum coin but it's on the tron blockchain which is a different blockchain and then the fees are much much smaller on this one so let's say you had that then you could send that across as well you get the address from here you click on get address and that's it and again the same for other assets for example let's say you want to deposit dot again you can get the address for dot uh, and then you can send it from your wallet or from another exchange and send them over here. And again, it does tell you here that after 30 network confirmations, they will be reaching your account. So you just need to be patient, by the way, even if on the blockchain explorer, it shows that it has processed, it has been validated, it has been verified many, many times by validators, but it hasn't arrived on your exchange account. You got to be careful. Uh, you got to be patient, sorry, um, just because it takes some time. So yeah, they need to verify that they're legit, basically. And then there's the withdrawal section here, which is pretty much working the same way. Uh, what you can do here is you can take out the funds and send them to your wallet or to another exchange, right? So for example, USD Tether is on Ethereum, on Omni, uh, Omni blockchain, on Trons blockchain and on EOS. So it's available on many other blockchains here. Uh, and this is only from this exchange only. Of course, USD Tether is available on other blockchains aside from these four, but this is what the exchange is supporting so that's why you're only seeing four here and again most people normally use the ethereum uh, version which is erc20 so you if you have a metamask wallet where you store your ethereum then you can use that or my ether wallet for example and most people now use tron because it's just so much cheaper to send uh, using tron here we can see the service fee is five bucks but if we use Tron, it's only 20 cents, right? So here, here you can see why it's so important to use blockchains that are much more scalable, that are faster. And again, I'm not supporting Tron or anything. I'm just showing you that for the purposes of a transfer, it's much more cheaper to use other blockchains compared to uh, Ethereum, right? Omni is also expensive, 480. And uh, even EOS is cheaper, right? It's only one. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much how it works. Again, you don't need to do KYC, which is to upload your documents in order to withdraw and to trade on MXC. It is free, so you can just create a basic account with your email address, but I do recommend you to set up 2FA, two-factor authentication for security purposes. You basically download an app and you note down the number that you generate because then it's more secure when you withdraw, uh, when when the funds leave uh, leave your ex leave the exchange, uh, you, they cannot leave the exchange with just your email address and your password you need to have that two-factor authentication code in order to confirm the transaction. So that's safer for you as well, right? And aside from that, also when you log into the account. And again, uh, uh, regarding KYC, so you don't need to do it, but there is a withdrawal limit of three BTC for 24 hours. So for 24 hours, you cannot withdraw more than three Bitcoin if you don't upload your documents. If you want to do larger transactions, then you need to upload your documents. Um, if you want to get them out within 24 hours, but you want something like more than three Bitcoin, for example. So yeah, otherwise you can just wait. Say you have six Bitcoin, you can wait 48 hours and you can withdraw in two different batches of, uh, of three Bitcoins. So yeah, this is pretty much it from today's video. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. Hopefully you found some value in this. And again, don't forget to use my referral link. If you do decide to uh, set up an account here, I would very much appreciate it. It would help support this channel. So Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.